Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Kingdoms. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a fantastic day. Uh, today, I want to do a little something. So, uh, a lot of people asked last episode, am I ever going to update to 1.13? Uh, we're actually in 1.13. It's just that this is an older world, so any chunks that were generated prior to 1.13, like this little bit of ocean right here, does not actually have the ocean stuff. However, if we fly out a bit farther, if we go out this way for a while, we should come to some new terrain that we haven't seen before. I don't know how far we're going to have to fly. I mean, oh, we're starting to get dolphins and stuff. But eventually, we should come to some new ocean terrain. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah, over here. Here we go. You can start to see it now. So this is all new uh, new ocean biome. So this, this world does have the ocean stuff, and I do intend to play around with it uh, eventually uh, pretty extensively. We're going to do some stuff involving new 1.13 mechanics and things like that. Um, well, actually, in fact, in today's episode even. Uh, but I think what I want to do is I want to wait for MC Edit to uh, become available for 1.13. I want to wait for MC, M uh, MC Edit to update. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to prune all of the old ocean chunks. Or, well, maybe not all of them, but a, a significant amount of the old ocean chunks so they'll regenerate with the new terrain. Because I haven't really done anything with the oceans uh, in this series. I think I might have, like one thing that has been built in an ocean biome somewhere. Uh, the Guardian Farm, actually, is was built in an ocean biome. Um, but other than that, like, I really haven't done anything with the oceans. So I think what I want to do is prune a lot of these chunks so they can get the new ocean uh, stuff. And it is possible to do it right now with uh, uh, some programs that exist. But it's a massive pain. <laughs> you have to basically do it like one chunk at a time and you have to go find the coordinates and this whole, it's this whole thing. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for MC Edit to update. And when it does, I'm probably going to like prune these oceans right here. So you'll look out over this and you'll see the new oceans that we get in 1.13. Um, but what we need to do is we need to uh, essentially rebuild something that I've already built in this world, although I'm going to build it with a different design. And that, my friends, is a squid farm. So right now, we're currently over here working on the kingdom of Nimbonia, right? Right here. This is our, this is our current kingdom that we're working on. Prismarine is a very significant part of the block palette, which actually reminds me, I talked last episode a little bit about the data pack that I use, or the data pack, however you want to pronounce it, uh, the data pack that I use for kingdoms, and I was talking about how I made a couple custom recipe changes, I actually uh, forgot to mention one, and that is that uh, I changed the recipe a little bit for prismarine, or for, for dark prismarine as well. So if we grab a crafting bench here, in default, this would give you one prismarine. I changed it so it now gives you four. So that's a little bit more reasonable. It's not quite as expensive because it's it's ridiculous how many blocks you can get. I mean, uh, think of it this way, you know? You can make regular prismarine with four shards. We'll make a regular prismarine. Uh, I think... Uh, prismarine bricks. I, I don't. I don't know. Either way, I made this recipe a little bit more reasonable. So now you get four dark prismarine for uh, for an ink sack and eight prismarine shards. I think that's a lot more realistic. Uh, but anyway, we need to make a squid farm, and the reason we need to do that. This world already has a squid farm, but it's actually built in a desert biome. And one of the changes that happened with 1.13 is that squid will no longer spawn in biomes that are not ocean, river, or... Uh, ocean? Ocean, river, or beach. That's the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's not an ocean, river, or beach biome, squids will not spawn. Which means that this wonderful squid farm that I've built in a desert, it, it doesn't work anymore. It, it, it can't work because it's built in a desert. So 
we need to build a new squid farm. Because obviously, if I'm building with dark prismarine here, I've got the guardian farm for all the prismarine drops. But I need ink sacks, and I need a lot of ink sacks over the course of this massive project, this massive kingdom. So yeah, we definitely want to build a squid farm. All right, guys, I am back. I actually spent quite a while wandering around the world looking for stuff and, uh, or, well, I should say looking for a suitable location to put the squid farm. And honestly, I think our best bet is right here, right next to uh, Nimbonia. There's this nice little chunk of river that's, uh, like, this is, I need to mark out exactly how big the river is. The farm doesn't need to be super big if we fill in these other little patches of river. Uh, the ocean's far enough away where nothing will spawn over there. Like, I think this is honestly a great spot because, I mean, you can see there's a bunch of squid and stuff spawning down here, or that have spawned down here. But we're gonna dig this thing down. I believe it's between Y level 62 and maybe Y level 47 that squid have to spawn. I'll have to check. Uh, I'll double check it to make sure. But basically there's like a limited uh, elevation that they're able to spawn in between. Uh, river biome is going to be your best bet because the only things that can squ uh, that can spawn in river biomes are squid and salmon. That's it. So you don't have to worry about like pufferfish or dolphins or any of that kind of stuff getting in the way of your your spawn. And honestly, it wouldn't be bad to just have a source of salmon, just like a passive food source, basically. Uh, so we'll we'll actually incorporate salmon into the farm. That should be fine. There's not a ton of other river to fill in. There's a little bit over here, a little bit right here. And then it kind of goes and sort of the river sort of just like peters out, like right over here. It just kind of comes to a stop, goes, you know, it's not very deep. This won't take long to fill in at all. And then we can actually do something cool with this well. I know we have this bridge here that kind of crosses the river, but we could easily turn this like into a little gulch. Um, you know, fill this in with like gravel and uh, cobblestone and stuff like that and make it, uh, you know, still have a reason for the bridge to be here basically uh but i think this is a this is a pretty good spot so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna mark out the boundaries of the river because they won't spawn in the mountain biomes on the sides here so we got to figure out all right this is river we can look at the at f3 and if you look at where it says biome minecraft river now it changed to mountains river mountains so basically i'm just gonna follow along the limits here, that, uh, okay, this is river, this is mountains, this is river. Okay, so I think we'll probably want to kind of go this way, maybe a little bit further. I want to mark out and see just how far I can go. Uh, maybe like here, that's still river. And then if we go this way, let's just see, Squid, you're not, now you're in my way. Don't worry, you'll be, oh, nope, now we're in mountains. This is, this is, okay, this is considered mountain. What if we, nope, mountain, river. Okay, this is river still, river, 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 okay. So we can go quite a ways over here. There it changes to mountain again. But this is all still river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have a decent space. It won't be huge, but it doesn't really need to be. Like, honestly, this should be big enough. For like a single player world, if we stop everything else from being able to spawn, like, that's a decent amount of space. I don't know exactly how big this is. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wide by however long that is. I mean, that's probably big enough for a single player world squid farm, I think, especially if we dig it all the way down to the limit. And, uh, and then the nice thing is we're gonna be in this area so much that this will be loaded and we'll just kind of have this like little passive squid farm gain, which will be pretty cool. I, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be really good. Awesome. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and get to work on digging this out and filling in the other rivers and all that kind of stuff. I'll be back with you in just a minute.
All right, guys, I am back. So I've got uh, a lot of the riverbeds all kind of filled in with grass and dirt and stone and stuff like that. We're going to turn this into kind of like a almost like a dried up riverbed. It's going to be a lot of like gravel and stone and uh, cobblestone and stuff like that. I think it'll look really cool when it's all done. And then I've also got this hole dug out and everything within this hole is within a, a, a river biome. So now what we need to do is start figuring out where we're gonna put stuff, how we're gonna collect things. I've designed a farm that I think will work for our purposes. It's not gonna be the most efficient thing in the world. Um, I And I also, before I get into this, I am fully aware that Il Mango put out a 1.13 squid farm design like a couple weeks ago. Um, but for a number of different reasons, I don't want to use that particular design. So, um, I, I, yes, I'm aware that farm exists. I'm aware it's much better from an efficiency standpoint, but it doesn't really meet my needs for a number of different reasons. So here's the plan. What I want to do is I want to go... Let's kind of work our way down here until... Let's see. So Y level 60 is here 59 if it would be here so this is going to be our spawning area these these three blocks essentially because that'll be um 58 59 and 60 and squid well actually squid can technically spawn at 61 as well which is up here oh I, that was unintentional um Let's fly back up real quick. There we go. Okay, so let's see. So if this is 58, this would be 59, 60, 61. That should probably be fine, honestly. So let's say this level is where we're going to want to put all of our... Uh, like our barrier. My plan is to basically have dispensers up top that will dispense water, spawn the slimes, and then, uh, or the slimes, spawn the squid, <laughs> and then when the squid have had time to spawn, uh, the dispensers will cut out and remove the water so they will all fall to their death, but they will be collected by hopper minecarts and all that kind of good stuff. That's basically my plan. Uh, the squid will die from fall damage. If they don't die from fall damage, they'll die from suffocation, but they they should die just fine from, from fall damage. Uh, so that is essentially my plan in a nutshell. Um, so the first thing I need to do is get in uh, a ton of signs or fence gates. I think I'm going to use signs. I mean, I suppose I could use fence gates too. What's cheaper? <laughs> that, what is going to be cheaper overall? That is the question. Let's uh, fly over here real quick. And let's just think about this, okay? So if we have planks and sticks, right? Um, I actually don't have a crafting bench over here. That's okay. Let's just make a 7,000th one for this inventory uh, or for this world. So let's see. That, oh, that's normal fences. So that's three plank, uh, four planks, basically, for one block. Whereas signs would be... Yeah, so signs are going to be cheaper overall. So why don't we go with signs then that should work although then again fence gates would be easier to work with if i ever need to do maintenance of any kind i think i'm just gonna go fence gates let's do fence gates they'll be easier to work with uh, as i said if i have to do maintenance of any kind that'll be a lot easier so let me get all the fence gates filled in i, I think i'll go ahead right away and put in the uh the minecart tracks and stuff as well for the collection system. Uh, and basically, uh, squid have 10 HP, so I think it's a 20 block fall to kill them. Um, so, let's see, we are currently at Y level, they'd be falling from Y level 58. I think if we go down to like 46, that, well, maybe that'd be okay. Is it one HP per fall? I don't know, if nothing else, they'll die from suffocation. 
I don't think we need to dig too much down, uh, down too much farther than this. Maybe I'll do a little bit more testing in the creative world. But anyway, I'm gonna get the fence gates and the signs in place up there. I'll get the, uh, the hopper minecarts and stuff, all that track laid down, down here, and then I will return. All right, guys, I am back. A little bit of a progress update. All the fence gates are in. The uh, the minecart system is in, except for that I need to put uh, blocks up at this level. Can I dodge? If you can dodge a minecart, you can dodge a ball. Uh, <laughs> I need to put blocks up at this level, transparent blocks uh, that the minecarts will suck everything through because uh, we don't want the squid falling and interfering with the minecarts if, if they somehow survive the fall. I don't think they will, but... Um, yeah, so also little minecart unloading station, nothing fancy, goes into here. Uh, this will untra- you guys know how minecart unloading stations work. Then there's a hopper line that runs underneath these blocks to over here. And somewhere around here, there's a dispenser, uh, and hooked up to a circuit that will automatically detect if there's stuff inside and it uh, pulses over and over again. Basically creating an item elevator that will spit everything out right here. This is where all the items from everything will go. So, what I still need to do, I gotta get the uh, transparent blocks down there. I think I'm gonna use magma blocks, which means I think I'm gonna have to go into the nether and get some. Uh, and then I also need to actually put the dispensers and everything in place at this level, uh, where this diorite is at. Um, so as far as the dispensers go, I need, I think it's 16, no, 24. I need 24 dispensers because it's four per row and there's six rows of them. I don't think I actually have enough string to make that many dispensers. I'm pretty sure that's like, I, I don't know how many I can make here, but let's just see. Because the thing is, dispensers get annoying first of all dispensers are annoying to make but also uh, yo go will you not let me ah there we go almost there so i can make 21 i'm three short hmm okay that's fine though that's fine um, I'm pretty sure that I have... Well, actually, you know what? We're so close. I might actually just be able... Hmm. I might actually have enough string to do this. I definitely have enough wood. I'm not worried about that. But we may actually have enough string to make this work. I was thinking I was going to have to go back to my storage room in Regnum or my mob farm over there because I've got tons of string over there. I would just really like to save myself the journey if I can, because it's <laughs> it's such a long ways. Um, let's see, string would be in here. I do have enough. I have just enough. Fantastic. That makes me really happy. Okay, so in that case, I don't need to go back. I do still need to go into the nether, though, and get some magma blocks. Uh, and then we get to, I think once the magma blocks are in place and the dispensers are all wired up to a timer and everything like that, I think it'll be done as far as functionality goes. I still want to decorate it and make it look decent and not terrible. Um, but let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's see if we can make this work. Let me do some more work on this, guys. I'll be back in a bit. Well, I decided to change the dispenser layout. So I'm actually back in Regnum anyway. Um, even though I wasn't planning to, uh, and I think while I'm here, I'm actually going to grab a few things. Let's grab maybe a white shulker box. I've already grabbed a couple other shulker boxes as well, and I think it would probably be wise to make myself some more rockets. I'm just going to make a, a, a rocket shulker box because I don't really have a whole lot of gunpowder back in the uh, the area where we are right now, or where we are working right now, I should say. So let's actually fly over to the mob farm. Ow, that hurt. Uh, <laughs> and this way, okay. And I think I'm just gonna grab some gunpowder out of here. Let's go, let's just grab like nine gunpowder. That should be enough for a full shulker box of rockets, which will last me quite a while. 
And I think I've got some, like, redstone components and stuff over here as well that might come in handy. I think I got a whole bunch of repeaters and comparators and stuff. Let's just take a look. And I know I've got a bunch of iron and all that kind of stuff. Let's see. So if I look in the redstone components, no repeaters and comparators, but we do have a stack of dispensers. Well, I guess I didn't need to come back to get string. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and make a whole mess of rockets. I'll get that. I'll stock up on some other stuff. I might bring some of this iron and gold back with me as well. Maybe some of this... Well, actually, there's not really that much redstone in here, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to stock up on a few different things, and I'll meet you back at the squid farm. So I'm just putting in the last of the dispensers. And we're almost finished there. You, you, I think that's all of them. Easiest way to do this, just make a platform that you can stand on. Tear it out later, the minecart hoppers will pick it up. All right, I missed one over there, and I missed one over here. No big deal. So let's get that one. Oh, hi. Okay, this is terrifying. No, don't blow up, don't blow up. Oh. <laughs> That could have been disastrous. Uh, where is this other one I missed? There we go. Just put that away. Or put that in place, I should say. And then this looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, I think this is good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is make a line down the middle. Like so. And this is where we're going to run our redstone line. And that way we won't need quite as many repeaters as if we were to run them just in a big giant line. Uh, this is all the stuff I brought with me back from the other uh, warehouse, by the way. Do I not have any more diorite? Really? Am I like that? I thought I had a ton of it over here. I swear I've got a ton of it over here somewhere. <laughs> I bet it's over here with all the... Man, I'm so disorganized right now. I think after this episode is over, I'm going to take some time and just organize all of this stuff because it is a disaster right now and it's driving me crazy. There we go. All right, let's just put these guys in place where they belong. So we'll just kind of make a line going down like so and then we'll just connect up these little bits oh you go there and remember once we tear all this stuff out because all the all the stone underneath there and all that kind of stuff that's all gonna get torn out and the mine carts will pick it up and return it to us so I'm not worried about losing these resources or having them fall. I'll be able to get them in just a minute. Let's just get all this out of here. And as far as the inside of this farm, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it or not. I haven't really decided yet if I want to replace all the walls or if I just want to say, you know what, it's fine. I guess it's going to depend on how we decorate the outside of the farm. That's going to be kind of the the determining factor, I guess you would say. All right, there we go. So now we've got our big central redstone line that runs down. Or that runs across, and then everything else should be good. So let's get up all the glass. And then I think it's time to take this part out. And this is where the hopper mine carts are going to come in because all of this needs to go. And then it should be good. Obviously, I still need to put the uh, the water buckets in the dispenser and actually wire up the redstone and put in the redstone clock and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I think we're pretty much good. I think the hardest part of this is all finished anyway. Uh, go there. There we go. All right. Fantastic. And then we should start seeing items popping up over here. Yep. All the stuff that uh, 
that we still have yet to get. That's all right. It'll pop up. It's it, it's getting there. Uh, so, yeah, let me go ahead and make a, just a massive... I, I'm going to need a total of 33 buckets of water to put into one into each of these dispensers, and then I actually need to wire up the redstone itself. Uh, I think I'll probably put the clock over here, like back kind of hidden over there. Um, and I think I want to build maybe a structure of some type over this. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, oh, and I still got to get the magma blocks in place. Dang it, I knew I forgot something. Okay, anyway, I got more work to do. All right, guys, I'm back. I got the wires, uh, the redstone all wired up. I got the magma blocks down there. Now it's time to test it and make sure it's all wired properly. So when I press this button, all the dispensers should fire. You get a little bit of a lag spike, but that'll be uh, apparently a lot better when 1.13.1 comes. And it looks like all of the dispensers have done their thing. So then we press it again, and all of the dispensers should go away. Okay, awesome. So it looks like everything's working. Now what we need to do is wire this up to an actual redstone clock. Now, the way that this needs to be done, well, I, don't, I suppose it doesn't have to be done this way, but the way that I'm going to do this is a little weird. Um, well, I shouldn't even say that. This is one of those things that, uh, the simplest solution is also the one that totally looks the most noobish. <laughs> oh, I can just see the, the rage comments now about how non-compact this redstone is going to be. Uh, that's okay, though. It's fine. Don't worry. Um, so we're just going to dig back, like, quite a ways, and hopefully that will be far easier. Enough. And now I think I'm going to go ahead and wire up the redstone, and then I'll be back so you guys can laugh at me. Alright guys, I am back, and I think the squid farm is done. I haven't actually fired the redstone yet uh, to get the timer going, uh, but I have tested it to make sure that it works. So, all we need to do to activate this thing is put a button right here. And do one of those, that'll fire all the dispensers, that'll get the signal moving through this massive long chain of hoppers, which is what you guys were probably going to laugh at me for. Look at all the hoppers, I know, I know, it's like a stack of hoppers. But honestly, I talked with a couple of uh, my friends who are Redstone Masters, Cubfan, Nembon, a couple different people, and they said, honestly, for what I was wanting to do here, hoppers were the... Uh, Repeaters were the way to go. Have I been calling these hoppers the entire time? If I have, I meant to say repeaters. Uh, but basically, the, the thing that makes this clock a little wacky is that it's a variable time... It's well, not a variable timing, but it's an uneven timing. Because what I want to happen is I want all the dispensers to fire to let the water dispense, and then I want about five seconds to pass, and then I want them to fire again to put the water back, but then... I want it to wait for about twice as long before they turn off the water. So essentially, <laughs> that's what's going on here. We've got one giant row of 15 repeaters. And that's what, uh, that's the little bit in beside, or, or in between. Uh, like it's, it's 15 and then roughly 30. Uh, 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 like, yeah, it, it's a little funky. Uh, but it works. It gets the job done, and then you can see the water kind of draining out of there. Now, right now, we're too close, I think, for... Well, oh, no, look, we're actually getting squid, even though we're way closer than we should be. Um, and it's a little laggy right now, but that's going to be fixed. 1.13.1 is supposed to be out th later this week, and apparently one of the things they're doing is greatly optimizing water updates. So hopefully that will help with the lag. I can also turn this thing off pretty easily by just breaking up like one piece of redstone dust. <laughs> Wouldn't be that hard. Um, now, as for the look of it, it still looks pretty bad. It's kind of this giant redstoney box right now. But unfortunately, I'm out of time for this episode, so I think I am going to save decorating it and making it look better for the next episode. However, we do have one more thing to do. So let's jump into a comment of the day. All right, guys, I am back. And today's comment says, Hey, Wells, when you were listing off the things in the Kingdoms world that you didn't show on the tour, you forgot to mention the Jungle Kingdom you started and never went through with. 
and that's from Tom Murphy. And Tom was not the only person to comment and say something about the jungle or Mesoamerican or Aztec, Mayan, whatever you want to call it, kingdom. Um, I did start a kind of Mesoamerican kingdom in the jungle. It's like mm, maybe a few hundred blocks off in that direction over there. Um, but I only built like two buildings there and then I kind of lost my idea. Like it, sometimes you have like this vision for an area and you start it and then you're like, how in the world am I going to make this work in Minecraft? <laughs> and your vision just doesn't quite work out. That's kind of what happened over there. I may return to it at some point, but I didn't include it in the tour because I don't really consider it a proper kingdom yet. Um, I mean, as I said, there's like two buildings there and that's it. <laughs> and then I kind of stopped with that one, but maybe we'll go back to it at some point in the future. Either way, it's off in that direction a few hundred blocks. But guys, I am very much out of time for this one. This whole thing took me probably about 14 hours, 16 hours designed between the most of that was spent trying to figure out this stupid farm and a design that actually works in 1.13. And um, it's actually kind of difficult to test in 1.13 as well, because yeah, you don't have all the third party tools to like change biomes and I made it work. I figured it out. I, I did eventually get the hang of it, but uh, I spent way too long designing this farm. Way longer than I should have, or way longer than you would expect. Mostly because I'm bad at technical stuff. But anyway, as I said, I gotta go. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Link's in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.